Angela, I think there's clearly a lot we can learn from the Global Food Safety Initiative. Um, some quick um, takeaways for me. One is the important role that private sector standards can play in complement to regulation. Um, second, I thought your point on the emphasis on um, auditing and verification is, is, is an important point we shouldn't um, lose. And the third uh, takeaway I have was this point about we need to be very thoughtful about what we want to be in a competitive space and therefore creating incentives for companies to innovate and what we want to be, have in the pre-competitive space so companies collaborate and communicate with each other. Um, our next speaker is Cathy Talkington, who's director of the Antibiotic Resistance Project at the Pew Charitable Trust. Thank you, Cathy. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today to talk a little bit about how at Pew we've been using partnerships to move towards policy or implementation to, to, to take some action uh, in this area of antibiotic resistance. I thought I would start with just a very quick video uh, that highlights uh, the point of people on the front line and the voice of antibiotic resistance. So uh, can you cue that up for me? More than oh. 2 million Americans. 2 million Americans get an antibiotic resistant infection. Mm -hmm. And 23,000 people die. 23,000 people die from superbugs. I've seen too many people with antibiotic resistant infections. We are running out of the very drugs. The very drugs that save lives. But it doesn't have to be this way. But it doesn't have to be this way. If we stop giving antibiotics to patients who don't need them. If we could be safer, smarter, and more sustainable about the usage of antibiotics. We can save antibiotics. I'm a doctor, and I save antibiotics for those patients who really need them. I'm a survivor, and antibiotics save my life. I'm a farmer, and I want to save antibiotics that save lives. I'm a researcher, and I'm fighting superbugs. I'm a supermom fighting against superbugs. Let's save antibiotics. We could save lives. So that video uh, has a couple of purposes. Obviously, one is putting that face, putting that human face to the issue of antibiotic resistance, those people that are on the front line uh, of this issue. The other thing that it points out for us is the areas in which Pew is engaged in the issue of antibiotic resistance. We're working on it from a variety of different fronts, looking at the issue of stewardship. How do we protect, uh, how do we make sure that the antibiotics that are available are there for the patients that really need them? We're looking at it in animal agriculture. Are there ways to reduce the need for antibiotics in that space? And then uh, the third prong of our work is on innovation. Are there ways to jumpstart uh, new drugs in this area? So what, Let's see, I need to move this. Uh, one of the tactics that Pew uses to work, to do our work uh, in general is the issue of collaboration. Uh, other things that we do as well are research and data, but bringing people together uh, to address a very specific issue is one of the fundamental things that we do uh, to address this, this uh, unique challenge of antibiotic resistance. Uh, bringing together whether it's government or industry or non-governmental organizations. Um, but how do we use these uh, opportunities to bring people together to align interests uh, to, to affect change? Um, so what I wanted to do today is use three examples uh, of the work that we're currently involved in from those uh, lines of work that I mentioned earlier. Sorry, I seem to be challenged here. Mm. Oh, the big green bus? OK, sorry. Um, so the first example I wanted to talk about is this issue of preserving antibiotics for those patients that really need them. Um, and, and so part of that translates to how do we reduce the inappropriate use of antibiotics. And as many of you know, in the U.S. Action Plan, there were specific targets set out for reducing inappropriate use. And in, un, in the outpatient setting, that, that target was reducing uh, by 50 percent uh, the amount of antibiotics uh, by year 2020. But then the question is, what does that really mean and how do we get there? So how do we make that, that goal actionable? So fortunately, in partnership with CDC, 
uh, we began to explore that to, to set those national targets. And the first um, thing we did was to get together the people that we needed uh, to help us think this through. And those people, again, those are on the front line. In order to have useful targets, it has to be those people that are going to implement this in the front line. So we brought together uh, primary care physicians, emergency care doctors, various participants in the outpatient arena to think about what information is available out there, what is the data, what is the methodology that we can apply to existing information to, to make those uh, goals more actionable. And what we were able to come up with is setting the, the first national target uh, for outpatient use. Uh, what we learned from uh, analyzing the information that we had is that 47 million prescriptions are unnecessary every year. Uh, and that translates to about one out of every three uh, in the outpatient setting. So this all of a sudden made it much more tangible and real uh, for those on the front line. They could understand uh, where some of the opportunities for improvement are. And I think the, the, the key here was making sure we had the right people at the table um, involving the government as well as private sector, nonprofit, uh, those people that could help really evaluate the information we have in order to get something actionable. The next uh, example I wanted to give was in the animal stewardship around potentially reducing the need for antibiotics. If that's our goal, then how do we, how do we begin to address that? Um, and we know that the, the conversation around antibiotics in animal agriculture is complicated. There are a wide variety of different uh, players, whether that's from industry or from uh, the retail side, consumers, et cetera. And, and some of those people are coming to this issue with different, um, different unique challenges or unique goals in mind. But are there opportunities for finding common ground? And we've heard a lot in this uh, session here in the last couple of days around alternatives. And that is an area that there's a lot of interest uh, and I think uh, common interest around a, a diverse set of uh, partners. There was a meeting held um, last year by OIE and USDA to begin to examine the alternatives, the knowledge that we have about the alternatives, what the research uh, priorities might look like. Uh, as you heard from um, a number of the speakers yesterday and today, uh, there is information out there, but there's an, a lot more that needs to be gathered in order to begin to see whether or not these are going to have the impact that we hope in all the various settings. But this area seems very promising. And being a part of this with the federal government, with the international organizations, with private sector, pharma companies, uh, coming together and setting priorities is an important area that's helping uh, to identify potential areas for reducing the need for antibiotics in animal agriculture. The other piece of this, I think, that, that benefits when we get uh, these voices together in a sort of a uniform way, we are able to then take those voices to advocate for additional resources. Part of the challenge, obviously, around alternatives is the research needed uh, to, to study them. So one of the things we are doing at Pew is getting those common voices advocating uh, on the Hill for additional resources to address this issue. The last issue that I, or example I wanted to talk about was in our innovation area on um, spurring uh, development by the use of data. And this issue, we've, uh, th this graphic, we've heard a lot about already today. I won't go into it in great detail, but clearly the antibiotics that we're using today are based on their on research that was done over th uh, 30 years ago, and that's a problem. The current system clearly is not working, um, and so. The, the, the solutions to this are complex. We've heard some of them today about incentives, uh, financial incentives, regulatory issues. Pew decided to focus initially on the scientific challenges for discovery of antibiotics. And so we brought together a diverse group of experts, again, to identify some of the next steps. And one of the things we've heard uh, in our uh, groups of uh, people, as well as in other uh, forum, is the need for sharing of data and information. So 
what we recognize is that there's a lot of good information out there, uh, whether that's failed studies uh, that have been done, people that have gotten out of the business of developing antibiotics or uh, publicly available data in research that needs to be brought together and, and facilitated. And at this point, there's no publicly available mechanism for doing that. So we are about to launch, uh, getting very close to a, launching a new pr uh, program called the Shared Platform for Antibiotic Research and Knowledge. Because there weren't enough acronyms in DC, we created a new one, and this one is called SPARK. Um, and so this is it's a virtual lab of sorts uh, where that we'll be collecting publicly available data at first, bringing it together targeting it towards gram negative. We don't want to just collect all data that's overwhelming at first. So one of our, the goals of the work that we've been doing is recognizing the need to target and focus the work that we're doing. So the data that will be collected here will be focused on gram negative uh, issues. We also will be bringing together experts to look at the information that's in there, to curate it, to make sense of it, to identify whether or not there are specific questions or patterns uh, that are out there so that we can make that data readily available to the research community. Um, and so this is obviously, it's a collaboration in the sense of people came together to identify this need, um, bringing the right people that, are, that actually need the information together, letting us know that that's a useful tool uh, that, that is not currently available. And then th the ultimate goal is that having the collaboration of those people uh, worldwide that are interested in finding, finding new ways to solve this challenge, making that read readily available to them going forward. This will, we're sort of soft launching that this summer, so there'll be more information on that, um, and then hope to have more information in the next six to nine months on how that's going, and look forward to, to input from many of you. And so just in conclusion, obviously uh, uh, antibiotic resistance is a very complex problem. There are so many people involved in it. Uh, the, in our opinion, the partnerships are so critical uh, in the sense that this is an urgent opportunity. We have this sort of window of opportunity, as we learned earlier and have heard many, many times. People are paying attention to antibiotic resistance right now, but we, it's not clear how long that uh, opportunity will be available. And so sort of harnessing that enthusiasm of the number of people and the number of sectors that are involved in this to us seems critical. Uh, we want to make sure we're not duplicating efforts. We want to uh, utilize everybody's skills and expertise to move this, this issue forward. So um, we hope that this, the, the sense of urgency and the benefit of using collaboration and partnerships will help to continue to move this issue forward. Thank you very much.